All right, we are going to now uh, find the center mass of kappa hockey puck uh, of mass m and radius r uh, by using the method of cutting it up into uh, semicircular arcs, or in other words, using the calculus onion ring slicer. Uh, I am going to, as normal, start off by defining a coordinate system, y and x axes, with the origin, of course, at the center of the straight side. The center mass in the x direction then is 1 over m times integral x dm. Okay, I'm going to divide this thing up in, by essentially into, into concentric circles. So I'm going to draw a couple of these. Uh, we have to consider carefully what they are. Here is one piece. Uh, and, and so I'm basically using a bunch of concentric circular arcs to cut this thing up. Here farther along is another one of these pieces. And I'm calling these, uh, again, something like onion rings, where I uh, have a, uh, a semicircular arc uh, that I have cut this thing up into. All right, let's say a little something about these arcs. First of all, remember we're using big R for the radius of the whole thing. I'll indicate up here in blue, big R is the radius of the whole thing. Each of these has its own radius, which varies, of course. This is going to be a variable. This guy has a radius little r, and the other one has its own radius of little r. Now, you notice that I've drawn the radius to the inner edge. Um, it doesn't matter if I draw it to the inner edge or the outer edge because the difference between the two is infinitesimally small. r itself is a real number, like 4 centimeters or something, but the difference between the inner and the outer edge of each of these rings is how much? Well, what is the thickness of this thing? From here to here, that little thickness is, of course, dr. That's the difference in radii between the inner and outer surface of that uh, semicircular ring. And uh, so that's why if I say the, the radius of the ring goes to the inner outer edge, it doesn't really matter. OK. So how am I going to use this to find the center mass? Well, I notice what each of these rings is. Each of these rings is a half a hula hoop. And we've already found that the center mass of a half a hula hoop its own center of mass is 2 pites r. And I'm going to use little r for the radius of, uh, of the half a hula hoop, not the radius of the whole half a hockey puck. So in other words, <coughs> each of these two rings that I've drawn uh, has its own center of mass two pi's of the way from the origin to the radius of that particular half of hula hoop. So this is kind of cool. I already know where the center mass of each of these pieces is. The next thing, though, is so that's what x. So I'm going back up. This x, remember, is the position of the center mass of dm and so these uh, pieces that I've cut this into are the mass elements. This ring thing here is dm. And its center of mass is at 2 pi, its radius, 2 over pi times the radius of that ring. So I'm going to be subbing in for this x. I'm going to be subbing in 2 over pi times r. That tells me that I might be interested in expressing dm also in terms of r, in other words, my variable here is going to be r instead of x. So I would, I'm interested now in expressing dm, what is dm in terms of constants r, little r, and dr. Okay. Remembering R, of course, is the radius, uh, variable radius of each individual onion ring that I've cut this thing into. All right. So, all right, well, what is the mass of each of these pieces? Well, I have uh, cut this thing up. The, the, the whole thing has a certain area. It is useful for us to consider the area mass density of the whole half a hockey puck, which is mass over area. Because each of these onion rings has its own surface area, 
which I'll color in for one of them, the smaller one here. If I color this in, this illustrates that this thing has a certain amount of surface area. The larger one has more surface area. And so I'm going to want to find its mass based on how much surface area it has. So again, I'm going to start off by defining sigma as the surface area mass density. Um, and the area, this, this is the uh, sigma for the whole thing. And so this is equal to m over the area of the whole thing. Okay, the area of a whole circle is pi r squared. This is a half a circle, so its area is one half pi r squared. That is big R for the whole uh, half a hockey puck. And so I can simplify that. Sigma is equal to 2m over pi r squared. Okay, that's the uh, area mass density of the half a hockey puck. And we'll be using that in a little bit. Because now what I want to do is say, what is the mass of each of these rings, half a ring, in terms of constants r and dr? Well, I can start off by saying the mass of each piece is sigma times the area of each piece. And each piece is so tiny, has just such a tiny amount of area, we refer to that as dA. Again, I've colored in one of them to represent the area of that infinitesimally thin ring. All right. There are a couple of ways of expressing the area. I, obviously, I'm not done yet. Okay, so we're trying to find the area of one of these uh, semicircular arc things. Uh, and as I may have just mentioned, there's a couple different ways to do this. Uh, I'm going to do one that you might not like. Uh, I hope you grow to like it. And that is this. I'm going to draw one of these arcs. And I will show this to you in class, or maybe I already have. But if I draw one of these arcs like so. This is one of the one of the uh, onion ring arcs that I've cut this into. Um, and I say, what shape is this? Because I need to find the area of this shape. Well, it's, geez, I think there's a word for this area, which is a circle with a circle cut out in the middle. It might be called an annulus. If you're a math whiz, you might be able to tell me if that's correct or not. So this might be a semi-annulus or something like that, some crazy thing. And I need to find its area. You can do this by finding the area inside the big circle and then subtracting the area of the little circle. And, uh, and that's one way to find the area of this ring. I'm going to do it in an easier way because I'm going to take advantage of the fact that it is infinitely thin, dr. And what I'm going to say that I'm looking at here then is it's not a semi-annulus thing, it's a rectangle. And the reason it's a rectangle is that I can, because this thing is so thin, I can actually take this bottom end, I can take this curved shape and I can straighten it out. I can take this bottom end and bring it up here, hold the other end firm, and I can basically say this shape is the same. I'm going to draw this in red. If I straighten this thing out, I'm going to get a shape that looks like that. I know it's not exactly the right length because I'm out of board space. But basically what I'm saying is that I can unbend this thing and make it into a straight rectangle, and I haven't changed it. Now, with a real uh, arc of this thing, a, a real semi-annulus, whatever this is called, of significant thickness, I can't do that. And the reason I can't do that with a real curved object of a thickness of a half a centimeter or something is because the inner circular part is a different length, this part right here, is a different length from the outer one. So I can't make a rectangle out of that. But because this thickness, this thing is dr, the inner surface and the outer surface differ by so little that by an infinitesimally small amount, I can't straighten this thing out and form it into a rectangle. So if you say, what is the area? of this semicircular arc, I say, I'm going to use the rectangle formula. And it is length times width. The width is dr, and the length is, uh, let's see, I'm going to call it a circle again. This is the circumference. Well, it's a half a circumference because it's half a circle. So the length, dA, I'm saying, is a rectangle, length times width. All right, But the length is how far do I have here? This is 
halfway around a circle. Circumference is 2 pi r. So this length is half of 2 pi r. So obviously it is equal to pi r. Pi r. And the thickness is dr. OK, that is the area of, that, of, of each of these onion rings that I've cut this thing into. So now I can say, oh, the mass, dm, is sigma times dA, but dA is pi r dr. OK, uh, sigma, by the way, that I will be subbing in all this stuff for sigma. That's all constants. So I now have dm expressed in terms of constants, pi, which is a constant, r and dr. My only variable is r. If I go back to my original formula, remember that I'm going to be subbing in for x, the position of the center mass. I'm going to be plugging in 2 over pi times little r. So I now have things to plug in in my original formula where my variable of integration is going to be r. Let me rewrite the formula down here. X cm is 1 over mass integral x dm. And now I'm going to uh, plug in. I'm going to substitute. X is 2 over pi times little r. dm is sigma times pi little r dr. OK. Uh, the pi's cancel out. And 2 and sigma are constants, so we can bring them out. So I have 2 sigma, whoops, I just misspelled sigma, sigma uh, over m integral. So I've taken the 2 outside and the sigma outside. So I'm left with an r, an r, and dr. That gives me r squared dr. Uh, OK, so I can actually integrate this thing now. And I need limits of integration now that I know that I'm integrating with respect to radius. And this thing, uh, of course, the smallest of these rings has a radius of 0. And the largest has a radius of big R. So my limits of integration are 0 to big R. Uh, from here on, it's just math, as they say. Let's see. I might as well sub in for sigma. Sigma is 2m over pi r squared. So I've got 2 times 2m over pi r squared, big R squared, all divided by mass. The mass is going to divide out. That makes me happy because the location of the center of mass shouldn't depend on the mass itself. It should just depend on the shape, how the mass is distributed. OK, now I have integral of r squared dr. Well, integral of r squared is going to be r cubed over 3. And I'm integrating from 0 to r. Okay, let's clean this up. Uh, mass go bye bye. I've got uh, XCM is 4, 2 times 2 is 4 over pi r squared. And then I plug in the limits. I've got big R cubed over 3 minus 0 cubed over 3, which of course is 0. And I'm basically done. XCM is equal to, I've got r cubed over r squared, so I'm going to have a 4 r on top and 3 pi on the bottom. I can write this as 4 over 3 pi times r. 4 over 3 pi is less than 1, so in fact the center mass is uh, between 0 and r. I am happy.